We are gathered here in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, to commission or ordain Ryan Porsche as the executive minister of the Northside Church of Christ, to which God has called him. We know that Ryan's heart is committed to proclaiming the good news of God's saving work through leadership, pastoral care, administration, spiritual formation, and service to the church family, our church family, and to the community. We have seen evidence of this commitment through his life of Christian service in many areas, but especially to the Southwest Church of Christ in Amarillo, Texas, and the Northwest Church in Seattle. We've also seen a commitment to service in Ryan's own home. Ryan and Claudia have dedicated themselves to ministering to their own children, to Caden and Elijah, knowing that the ministry they offer to their own family <clears throat> will both enhance and reflect the ministry they offer to our larger church family. Therefore, we embrace the opportunity to welcome Ryan and call him to his role as the executive minister of the Northside Church of Christ in San Antonio, Texas. Ryan, God has called you to serve Jesus Christ as a minister of the gospel within Christ's church. The shepherds of this church family recognize your gifts for ministry and have invited you to use them within this community of believers. Ryan, do you trust in Jesus Christ as your savior and acknowledge Christ as the Lord of the world and head of the church? I do. You accept the scriptures as God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, that they are all a unique and an authoritative witness to Jesus Christ, and they are God's word to you and to this church. I do. Will you always remember your baptism, serving as a disciple of Jesus Christ in our midst, offering your whole being as God's servant? For Christ's sake. I will. Will you be wise in how you live, loving God and others, and walking according to the gospel as you serve as an ambassador for Christ? I will. Will you seek to serve this church and our city with energy, thoughtfulness, intelligence, imagination, compassion, and care after the model of Jesus Christ? I will. Will you continue to be a good steward of the gifts God has entrusted through you, through God's Holy Spirit, for the building up and maturing this church to the glory of God's kingdom? I will. Bless you. Thank you, Tim. We want to welcome Ryan's wife, Claudia, and his two sons, Caden and Elijah, to the congregation here. We're glad you're here. One of the things we want to acknowledge this morning is as uh, Ryan begins his ministry here, it's very important the support that you provide in his life. Uh, we know your home is your first ministry, Claudia, but you are integral in, this, in his ministry. And so we asked some questions this morning. Claudia, Caden, and Elijah, do you affirm the gifts that Ryan brings to this ministry? Will you love and support him as he assumes these responsibilities? We will. And will you join this Northside Church family as fellow disciples of Jesus, loving and serving this church as this church pledges to love and serve you? We will. We're glad you're here. Northside family, if you agree to each of these questions, we invite you to respond with, we do. Do we as members of the Northside Church of Christ affirm Ryan Porsche as leader in ministry among us, promising both with him, promise to, promising both to labor with him in ministry of the gospel and to give him our love and support? Do we agree to encourage this family as our brothers and sisters, being sensitive to her needs and supportive of their Christian walk. I think it should be their needs. 
and supported their Christian walk. Thank you. <laughs> Do we dedicate ourselves to the ministries God has given us, realizing that Ryan cannot be expected to assume the responsibility for that which God had give, given us to do. And do we play us to love his family as partners in ministry? Thank you. Would the shepherds come up? And Ryan, would you come a little closer here so that uh, can lay some hands on you? Of course. All right. So Ryan. It is the conviction of this community of faith that you've been given the gifts for leadership in this ministry within God's church, a church for which Christ gave his life. Specifically, we believe that God has called you to minister to and with the Northside Church of Christ. Therefore, we call and ordain you to this ministry which God has prepared you to do so. We urge you to seize every opportunity to enlarge your understanding of yourself, of God's word, and this church family and the communities in which we live. We carefully attend, will you carefully attend to your personal relationship with God, devoting yourself to prayer and opening yourself to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We charge you always be mindful of your ministry to your family. You were called to be a minister to them before you were called to be a minister to us. We affirm this prior calling and we urge you not to allow our needs to intrude on this, your primary ministry in this world. Finally, when Paul charged Timothy as a minister, he encouraged him to avoid attitudes that destroy ministry. He cautioned him against conceit, envy, slander, dissension, and the love of money. Paul then charged Timothy to pursue righteousness and godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness, the things that provide for faithful ministry. And we affirm these wide admonitions. We echo these words of Paul to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses in sight of God, in the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, we charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring in about his own time. God the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable life, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be the honor and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our action today reflects our commitment to the life and ministry of this church and of our conviction that Ryan Porsche has been equipped to lead us in this ministry of Christ in the church and in the world. Remember, that is just as we have committed this servant to his ministry among us so also we have committed ourselves to Ryan, to uphold and sustain him as a brother and partner in the body of Christ. Let us take care that our attitude and conduct, toward him, conduct towards him befits the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we remain steadfast, patient, gentle, loving, and faithful to God's calling. May we be partners, not critics, servants, not judges, vessels of God's patience, forgiveness, understanding, and support, which Christ has shown to us and which we desire from Ryan. 
May we bear his burdens and share his joys, knowing that he is our brother in the Lord, our fellow struggler, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the faithful, or excuse me, of the fullness of Christ. <clears throat> to the search team who prayed so hard and worked so diligently to listen to God's voice during this process, we offer you our deepest gratitude. Every candidate you considered was currently engaged in a ministry, which meant you had to keep strict confidentiality for their sakes, their family's sakes, and for their congregations. You spent countless hours reading resumes and philosophy of ministry statements, discussing the merits of each candidate, and then interviewing them online. With the input from the shepherds and ministers, you called two candidates to the forefront for special consideration, checking references and, along with the shepherds and ministers, interviewing the candidates in person. Mostly, you bathed each candidate and the entire Northside family in fervent prayer. All of your work led to today. As of this morning, your work is done. Because of you, we are welcoming Ryan, Claudia, Caden, and Elijah to our church family. We thank you for your service to Northside and to God's kingdom. To the ministers who will work side by side with Ryan in your service to this congregation, we pray that God will continue to give you strength and faithfulness. To my fellow shepherds, I pray God's richest blessings on us as we lead and serve the flock under our watch care. To Claudia, Caden, and Elijah, we offer to you today our blessings and our full support. May God sustain you and God give you patience, courage, and joy. And Ryan, May God empower you to fan into the flame the gift of God, this calling, which we have given to you through the laying on of our hands. We know the Spirit of God gave you, does not make you timid, but gives you power and love and self-discipline. We urge you, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, but join with all of us in sharing and suffering for the gospel by the power of God. For we know whom we have believed and are convinced that he is able to guard what we have entrusted to him until that day. Guard the good deposit that is entrusted to you. Guard it with the Holy Spirit that lives within us. And the whole church said, Amen. Except for Ryan. We are all excited about uh, this day, and none of you are as excited as I am. Uh, <clears throat> we love the church, uh, the congregation that Ryan and the Porsches have been a part of uh, in Amarillo. Uh, that group of elders and that congregation and his fellow ministers uh, have loved him dearly. And uh, one of the elders of the Southwest Church, Jay Ferris, uh, has prepared a video that we will play now that will uh, reflect their love of Ryan and Claudia and the kids and a blessing on this church. Good morning and warm greetings from the Southwest Church of Christ. On behalf of the Southwest elders, we send to you the Porsche family with our full blessing, and we commend them to your service in God's kingdom. As Ryan, Claudia, Caden, and Elijah join you at Northside, we also entrust them to your love and care. We share with you our mixed feelings of sadness and joy. Southwest has been tremendously blessed by the daily presence of the Porsche family. Ryan and Claudia, are our trusted partners and close friends. They have loved us well, and we will miss them deeply. 
At the same time, we are very excited for Northside to share in the love and the giftedness that the Porsches will bring to you, and we look forward to hearing stories of their continued journey at Northside. The mission at the Southwest Church of Christ is to love first, become like Jesus, and advance His mission. In your statement at Northside, to reflect and serve God's mission of love, we share a kindred spirit. We pray God's blessing on the Porsche family, on the Northside Church of Christ, and the community you serve. And your relationships with God and your relationship with others, may it be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Ryan, thank you for accepting this challenge. Uh, Claudia and Caden and Elijah, thank you for also accepting this challenge because you share in this ministry in so many ways. We are blessed to have you in our presence. This is an easy church to love, and they will love you back. We have prayed for you a long time and fervently. We are glad you're here. Uh, if you don't mind, please offering your response to, uh, to this congregation. May I introduce to you your executive minister, Ryan Porsche. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for all of that. It's so special and a very special day to be here together. I want to mention just a couple things, a few words of thanks, uh, as you might anticipate. Yesterday, quite a few people showed up at our house to help us unload our things. I would like to thank those people <laughs> for showing up and sweating and helping us so much. That really made a big difference, and uh, I'm especially grateful. Of course, I'm grateful to the search team for all of your hard work and your prayers and your discerning. Uh, when you start to think about the implications of the discerning work that you've done and that we've done together, it can become pretty overwhelming. All the lives that are impacted by what has transpired. But our trust is in the one whose perspective is not limited and who is at work among us. And so I thank you for your discerning to the staff, of course, you guys have been, have gone above and beyond through this interview process. I know you'll continue to do so as I have a learning curve, as, an, as I join the team. I want to thank you for going above and beyond. I want the staff to know my care for you is real. I'm going to bring all that I have to the table to help our team and I know each of you will make me even better. Uh, David, I'm excited to serve Christ with you. Uh, Jack, I'll probably say more later, but on behalf of all of us, thank you for using your gifts to serve this church family. Thank you. We are so thrilled that you and Lisa will still be a part of Northside, of course, even though your role is changing. Uh, Jack will soon be our very first executive minister emeritus, <laughs> and we will refer to him as such. <laughs> uh, to the elders, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm excited to build trust and health together, to build trust and health together. Uh, I need all of you to know that uh, technically I will begin on July 1. So if you don't see me again until then, <laughs> and you're asking yourself, what happened to that guy that we blessed and charged? Um, I'm, I'm going to be taking some time to rest. Um, uh, there's some grief for the church family that we said goodbye to last week. Uh, I'm a bit tired from the move, of course, and this interview process, frankly. So I'm going to rest a bit, and I would invite you, please, to be patient with me for a couple more weeks. And if you would, please be prayerful for me and my family as we rest, as we seek renewal, 
and you can count, you can count on that I'll be all in uh, when I start here soon. Finally, I want you to, to know this. Uh, Jesus prayed that his Father's kingdom would come, that his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he taught us to pray the same, yes? Well, I certainly believe the life of Jesus was the beginning of the answer to that prayer. And I know we see small pieces of the answer to that prayer throughout our journeys. But I want you to know today, I believe with all of my heart, that one day that prayer will be fully answered. That the kingdom will fully come. And God's redeeming work will be complete in me and in you and in this world. And in the meantime, we get to join God in building his kingdom in us, among us, and among this community. And I am excited and eager to join you in your continued building of the kingdom of God here in San Antonio. Amen? Amen. Amen. Again, thank you so much. Would you join me in prayer, please? Father, you alone are worthy of all praise. You are creator, you are all-seeing, you are omniscient, and you are Jehovah Makadesh. We confess that we are lost without you, and only through your son, Jesus, are we able to approach your throne. We thank you, Lord, for the heart of your servant, Ryan, as he joins the work you are already doing here at Northside. We pray that you continue to guard and guide his heart and mind as he takes on the important role of executive minister. We pray that he would form a close relationship with David, as with all the ministry team and staff, as they work together for the good of your people here in San Antonio. Give him an understanding heart to serve the church and the broader community in which we live. We pray for the Porsche family as they settle into a new home, a new community, and a new daily rhythm. Help us, Lord, to make their ministry a joyful experience and not a burdensome one. Help us come alongside Ryan, Claudia, Caden, and Elijah and make them welcome. We pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you are able, please stand for the reading of God's word. I'll be reading from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 through 15. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we, will in, if we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we were faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before the Lord that they are to, to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, some of you noticed that I skipped church last Sunday. 
I know that you noticed because uh, several of you sent little notes to me all week long. Missed you at church last Sunday. Um, I, I really wanted to be at church last Sunday, I, I promise you. In fact, at about 6 a.m. last Sunday morning, as I was um, lying on a hospital bed at Methodist Stone Oak, I kept saying to anyone who would listen to me, and at that point, that was only Lisa, and she was by that point only half listening, I really need to be at church this morning. Uh, this is Rachel Starr's ordination service, and I've got a role to play. I've got to go to church. I have no idea why anyone thought that I might be having a stroke, <laughs> which is we thought uh, might be happening. Uh, during the night, um, last Saturday night, I, I felt a tingling and numbness on my right arm and shoulder that did not go away. And Lisa kept saying, why are you rubbing your arm? And I said, well, I've got this tingling. And then I began to feel it on my face. Uh, and it took about 0.35 seconds for Lisa to call 911. If you ever feel like you're having a stroke, you want Lisa nearby. Uh, EMS was in our bedroom in about four minutes. Um, I was slurring my speech and couldn't find words, and they said, you need to get to the hospital. And in less than a half an hour, I was sitting still in a CAT scan uh, as they were checking to make sure that I had anything up there. I, I did, but there was no damage. Whatever happened, there was no damage. And we don't know exactly what it, what it was. It could very well have been a TIA or uh, a mini stroke, which is to say it was a stroke without, without damage. It's possibly related to a migraine a condition. We are looking, we are trying to find what's going on. As of right now, I feel almost normal. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm especially grateful for all of those notes of prayer and concern um, that were sent to me and especially uh, to Lisa. Uh, as scary as this was for me, I promise you it was scarier for her. And we're grateful for my health and especially for our relationship with this sweet family. We've been going through a process of searching for an executive minister now for almost a year. When the elders uh, asked me to be executive minister, I committed to being in that role for 18 months. That was four years ago. It is, uh, it is the right time. It's the right time for me, it's the right time for, for Lisa, we're not going anywhere. You are our family. This is our home. But I did not have the responsibility, nor should I, to uh, find my replacement. And so this, uh, this search team for the executive minister's role has been going on uh, for months. And on one morning, uh, David uh, came to my office and wanted to give me an update on what's going on. And he said, we got another application in. This morning, I said, oh, really? He said, yes, it's, um, it's Ryan Porsche. Uh, do you know Ryan? And I said, um, I knew Ryan when he was in diapers. <laughs> I knew Ryan's mother when she was in diapers. Sorry, Becky. I'm not that much older than you. Becky uh, and Dickie, Ryan's parents, are here. I'm going to embarrass you and have you guys stand. You, you, uh, you need to be recognized. Those who are sitting near them need to come and, uh, and meet them. This is Ryan and Becky. 
Dickey's role at the Highland Church in Abilene is similar to the role that, uh, that this church is called Ryan to today. Becky's mother, Ryan's grandmother, was my piano teacher, but she was far greater than that because she mediated the gift of music to me in ways that my family could not. And she is as close to being a member of my family as anyone not related to me is. I'm grateful for her, for Becky, and for Dickie, and Ryan, and Claudia, and Kate, and Elijah. Um, I'm so glad, Ryan, you are part of this team. Ryan um, served as a church planter in Dallas. He served, among other things, as a worship minister at the Northwest Church in Seattle, and has been these last few years uh, the Minister of Spiritual Formation uh, at the Southwest Church of Christ in Amarillo. Ryan is immensely gifted, especially with gifts of administration. He knows how to organize. He knows how to make things happen. He knows how to listen. He knows how to pastor. He knows how to work with a team. He knows how to love a church. And we're grateful that you are here and that your family is here to bless this congregation. David asked me um, several weeks ago if I might say some things about the church's role in relation to ministers or to church leaders. Uh, it's especially appropriate with all of the new young ministers that, uh, that we have, Rachel, whom we blessed last week, Ryan today, and in July, we will uh, also bless uh, Evan Tardy, who has come from among us uh, to serve this church as the minister to young adults, and we want to, to bless and ordain her in that role uh, in the month of, of July. And so, as, as I was thinking about the brief words that I would say this morning, my mind went to 2 Timothy 2, to Paul's calling of the young minister, Timothy. And in the reading that Gary uh, uh, read in our presence a moment ago, there are three words that I want to call your attention to. Just three words. It will say something about what our responsibilities are as a congregation, but also something about how we all ought to be and the kinds of things that we ought to do in relation to God. The first of those words is the word remember. Remember, he said. First word in the text, remember. The word in the, in the Greek is mene menos. It, it is that word that we get our word, a, a mnemonic, a mnemonic device. A way of remembering something. A way of memorizing something. Uh, Paul says, I want you to remember, not just to recall, not just for you to think about from time to time, but I want you to bury it in your mind so deeply that you will never forget. What? Remember what? Well, remember the why of what you do and of who you are. Not just remember the things you ought to do, you can't, you can't come up with a list long enough to know what you ought to do in every situation. But remember the why of who you are. Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead. That's what you remember. That's, that's the heart of who you are and of what you do. Remember what God has done. Remember God's acts of deliverance for you. Because what God has done before, God is still doing. And God will do again. So how do we live? Well, it's not remember the rules. It's not get everything right. Do everything correctly. It's not, you know, I don't like that. I don't like it when we do that. We haven't always done it that way. We used to do it this way. 
When I was a child, I remember how things were done. Our role is not to make sure that we get our way. It's not about us. Remember, Jesus Christ, who died and who rose from the dead, and that's the why behind everything we do. The second word is endure. Paul says to Timothy, I endure everything for your sake. The word's an interesting word. The word literally that we translate endure is literally to remain behind or to stand back. I want you to imagine two armies, two ancient armies on the field facing each other. And before the battle begins, from your side, there are about 12 young men, brash young men who come riding out on their horses and they're hollering and taunting the other side and waving their swords and you can't get us and you can't touch us. The word says, get back. What are you doing? We need you. We don't need you out there. We want you to be wise and hanging back. It's about persevering as a group. Don't be rash. See things clearly. Things won't always go well. Don't be surprised. We need you to be permanent here, to stand firm, to wait for, to hold out, to endure. It is an aggressive action, but also wise resistance. Endure hard things. Don't be surprised when suffering comes. Suffering is going to come. Some of the suffering is because you're human. Some of the suffering is because you are a disciple of Jesus. And Jesus suffered too. And you will always suffer because of him and with him. Be steadfast in the midst of uncertainty and threat. Don't stick your chin out to prompt someone to hit it. Don't test God. Well, no, I, I just, I'm just going to, I don't want to live with fear. don't want to live with fear. Satan said to Jesus, just jump off the temple. Don't be afraid. God will catch you. And the response to the temper was, don't test God. Our task is to wait on God as an energetic resistor of evil and endure suffering when it comes without whining or complaint. And the third word, in the words maybe most familiar to many of you, rightly handling, rightly teaching. I learned this passage from the King James. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There are some old words there. Uh, the word study in that ancient uh, translation didn't mean in 1611 what it means today. It means to work hard at, to do your best at. Rightly dividing is not what I was taught, which is to say divide the Old Testament from the New Testament. It has nothing to do with that. Rightly dividing means cut it straight. The root word of that word is ortho. An orthodontist is someone who makes your teeth straight. An orthopedist is someone that makes your bones straight. Walk straight. Shoot straight. Stand straight. Judge straight. Measure straight. If you're going to lay down a road, lay it down right. Make it a road that people can walk on to get there. And in the larger sense of the kingdom, understand that it is God who has made straight the road. God has already laid down the road.
we find the travelable road that God has cut straight. It's not just teach it correctly. It's certainly not, you better get it all right because we're humans. It is, don't just teach it. Live it. It's not enough to say, I believe this, I believe that, you ought to do this, you ought to do that. If we don't live it, teach it as a follower, live it as a disciple, live it in such a way that there's no reason to ever feel ashamed of our behavior. Not because my way is correct, but in contrast to the false teachers, it isn't so much that the false teachers were saying things wrong. Sometimes they did, but often they didn't. It's that the false teachers couldn't connect what they said with how they lived. And how they lived was tearing the church apart. And so in these next several verses, we see what it means to rightly handle the word of truth. Stop quarreling. Paul says, make sure, Timothy, when you go to Ephesus, that you tell them, handle the truth rightly. You need to live out the word of truth. Stop quarreling. Stop the pettiness. Stop the silliness. Make sure you understand what's important and what is not. It's not enough to say, well, there's God's road. You ought to walk on God's road. Go out there on God's road and walk it. That's not what God wants. What difference will it make if we tell people, there's the road, you better get on it, if we don't find our way to that road? And so, Paul says, remember it, recite it, memorize it, know it deeply, the why. It's about Jesus' death and resurrection. He says, endure, be strong, resist wisely the enemy. And finally, he says, handle well, cut straight the word so that you not only understand it, but you live it. How does the church respond to church leaders, to elders, or ministers? Well, the same way God calls the whole church. It matters what you believe, but it also matters how we live. And as we approach the Lord's table this morning, may we never forget the why. That the why is not about making sure that we get everything right as hard as we may try, but that we always remember, no matter what, behind everything we think and do, Jesus Christ raised from the dead. Last Sunday, I hosted the Southwest Church family in Amarillo around the table for the last time. Uh, I calculated that after about nine and a half years of service, my family had shared communion with them somewhere over 400 times. And last week was the final one. Uh, I'm not sure how many the Lord has for us together. Today is the second time I've shared with you, and I want you to know it is my profound honor to welcome you to the table of grace today. Uh, I brought this special cup um, because I used it last week at Southwest. So for me personally, it's sort of a, a connection point. Certainly, there's nothing wrong with your cup. <laughs> um, <laughs> And no, I did not steal it from the Southwest Church. 
in Amarillo on my way out. Um, no, they, they gave this to me several years ago, and it's, it's very special to me. Um, thank you, Jack, for your words. Yes, we share this meal every week, this bread and this cup, as reminders of Jesus, his life, his death, his resurrection, because they help us not lose the plot of this story that we're in. His death and resurrection is at the very center. It helps us remember the why. It helps us not lose the plot. What I want to share together before we partake as a family, I just want to take this opportunity in this unique position, being new, to remind you that the kingdom of God is much larger than just us and just now. You know this, but I want you to use your imagination with me for just a moment. Let's imagine that this wall could disappear and that our semicircle of chairs could continue and wrap its way all the way around the table. And I'm imagining today my church family in Amarillo filling these seats around the table. And I see their faces in my mind, and I remember their hearts. But the kingdom of God is bigger even than our two churches, right? There are so many churches in this city and this state and this nation and all around the world. So imagine all the walls fade away and here we are in this massive expanse of seats as the kingdom of God gathers around this table. There are believers all over the world sharing this meal today. But it's even bigger than that because there are those who've gone before us. There are people who have invested in your life and your faith who are no longer with us. There are people who have been influencers for this church family, and there are people who influence them, who influence them, who influence them all the way back. And so it's like there are balconies and balconies and balconies of this great cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on because here we are taking up our spot in the story of God and continuing to build his kingdom here together. The kingdom of God is so much bigger than just us and just now, and yet we're so privileged to take our spot at the table today, not because of anything we are or anything we've done, but because the Lord himself has invited you and welcomes you to the table of grace. So my friends, let us not lose the plot. Jesus is the son of God who died on a cross and who was raised to new life and who lives today. Let us not lose the plot. And as we share this meal, we give honor to the king. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. Thank you for the gift of this meal that we are so privileged to share Not one person deserves to be at this table, yet you have called us and invited us. You welcome us with love and grace and the mercy that we need so desperately. Father, as we share this meal again today, remind us that your kingdom is so much bigger than we know. And encourage us as we take up our place in your story. And help each of us, Father, to become more and more the image bearers that you always intended for us to be. We pray this in the name of Christ and everyone said, amen. If you would, please, let's take the bread and the juice together.
There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Jesus, my Redeemer, name above all names, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, hope for sinners slain. Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Well, if you haven't figured this out already, teachers and preachers and prophets like to talk about the things that they can relate to. And it struck me today that I can't think of anyone, except for maybe Bruce Utley, that remembers better than Jack Reese. <clears throat> and there are very few that I can think of that have modeled endurance like Jack Reese. And certainly no one that I can think of that cuts as straight as Jack Reese. Um, so Ryan, you have big shoes to fill. But it will be nice to not have every story start with, I knew them in diapers. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that, that change. Um, but I think you can already tell from the words that Ryan has shared this morning um, why we felt so strongly about Ryan and his family coming to join us at Northside. And we are so, so excited that you are here. Um, we are also excited that everyone has joined us today, whether you're here in person or online. We hope that you feel welcome, and we hope that you have been blessed by the time that you've been here already, and we also hope that you will stick around a little bit longer. We would like to spend more time with you. We have classes for all ages beginning at 10.30 this morning. Offerings can be made by visiting our website, mailing a check, or dropping your gift in the boxes at the back of the Welcome Center. And then we have a few announcements this morning, starting with the young adults. They are kicking off the summer with a cookout. They're going to meet at the Norsworthy's house on Thursday, June 13th at 7 p.m. Please RSVP to Evan Tardy at youngadults at nscoc.org. Northside is also hosting a loss of a spouse seminar for those grieving a spouse's death, which will be Saturday, June 15th, 1 to 3 p.m. Please share with your friends and family that may benefit from this workshop. The seminar is free to attend, but registration is required. And to register, you visit nscoc.org slash grief, or for more information, email grief at nscoc.org. Okay, now for everyone, join us for our third annual church-wide cookie competition and hot dog meal, which will be Sunday, June 30th from 4.30 to 6 p.m. Please bring a batch of cookies to share and enter to win. 
Prizes will be awarded for best tasting, most visually appealing, and best overall under age 16. We're also gonna take this time to express our gratitude to Jack as his time as our executive minister comes to a close. And in honor of Jack, we have added a special category this year. This is really your favorite cookie? This is, okay, best shortbread. That's, that's his favorite, so that's a new category. Um, for more details, you can email women at nscoc.org. And we'd also like to invite anyone that would like prayer this morning uh, to find someone in the back, one of our shepherds or our prayer team members, and they will be happy to pray with you as you exit today. Uh, for the youth group, we have our first Sunday thrill of the summer tonight from 6 to 8 p.m. at Voigt Park inside Hollywood Park. We hope you'll come out and have some fun playing volleyball, basketball, nine square, all the fun, hot things. So bring a water bottle too. Um, and then finally, the youth will have their first awesome adventure Thursday. This week, all high school students are invited to join us for some fun at Schlitterbahn. We'll meet at Northside at 10, return at 4 p.m. Cost is only $20 if you sign up in advance and you can email youth at nscoc.org for more information. Okay, um, as we stand for our final song, uh, please receive this benediction. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Let's sing together. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, so we are the voice in the desert, crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation comes. These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as white in your world, and we are the laborers in Declaring the word of the Lord, behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation comes. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. And out of Zion till salvation comes. So lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee. And out of Zion till salvation comes. 
Amen. Go in peace.